Hello, well, I hope you're all doing well today. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, kind of the beginning or a little bit further on our, our idea of country analysis and what it takes to look at a country and decide whether uh, that country or that new market is a place where you'd want to start your business. And there are a lot of different ways to look at it and a lot of different help you can get. And fortunately, on the internet, there are a lot of tremendous sites that uh, provide the kind of information that you'll be looking for when you decide or, or think about different markets. Of course, it's all influenced by the kind of product you want to sell, the kind of company you are, what you want to do, etc. And so that has to be, um, of course, taken into account in, the, in where, you're, where you're going. But once you have your product, your idea, your plan, and, and your co basic concept, then you can start looking at different countries and see what sort, what, how, it, uh, how you might, uh, what they, how they might fit into your plan. One way I look at things sometimes a little bit different, but I always think about what would it be like for me to actually move there? If I were to physically move there just with me and my family, what would I be looking for? And oftentimes you look at the same kind of things. What's the government like? How safe is it? What's taxation like? You know, what are the living conditions, etc. And a lot of that's very similar to what you think about a company. Companies are different, of course, but sometimes it helps to make it really personal and it gives you uh, some kind of better feeling. But anyway, let's look at this. Um, if you look at the slides uh, there on, on for this module on country analysis, I think it'll help a bit. And, and really, I'm just going to go briefly over, over uh, this. Um, if you look at the first one, um, you'll see that that there are um, a lot of websites that provide information, and they provide a tremendous amount of information, and it's uh, freely available, and it and it works um, it, very well in terms of giving you an idea where or how to do different things. Also, as you saw from some of the videos and YouTube videos, you know, there are any number of, of companies and law firms and, and uh, investment advisors and business advisors, etc., that have developed packages and programs and information uh, structures to help you understand how to work in that country. Uh, I will say right off the top, you can never go into a new country without a very strong legal representation. Someone that really knows their way around, somebody who's well known in the market, and somebody that can really help you, and hopefully that has offices in your home country as well as in the foreign country. Sometimes they won't be the same name office, but they'll be very closely linked. But if, say, for example, if you're a large company uh, in the U.S. and you intend to move to a place where you're less well known, your legal representation here in the U.S. will likely have a partner there that can help you get started. I've seen a lot of companies uh, come into the U.S., which is a, a fairly a safe market. I think they know what they're doing in terms of, like, say, real estate construction downtown around a brickle area or something. They buy land, they do, that, and then they they realize that they have an inappropriate investment that they can't build there, they can't do things, they can't get the approval, or that there are some uh, uh, geological or, or maybe environmental issues that they never even thought of that they didn't understand, and their countries don't exist, but here they certainly do. So I've seen that a number of times, and because people, you really have to be careful of how much you think you know uh, there, and also you have to really realize, when you're looking at a new country, coming into a new place, the reception is all, not always that uh, uh, welcoming. In fact, you're often looked at as someone who can be taken advantage of, can be fooled, can be tricked, and can be uh, used to make a profit and, and for someone locally. And, and so that often happens. So you have to be very careful. But on the other hand, when you look at these different sites, you can see which, one, which countries are favorable towards foreign investment. And like we said before, you know, you really have to see what they're what that country's looking for. Are they looking to export? Then an export thing will be more, uh, you know, more favorably looked at upon. If they're uh, wanting to, to develop some un uh, some resources they can't quite get to, they can't, they don't have the technology for, then that's going to be looked at favorably. Except they'll probably want you to do a joint venture with a local company so that you can transit that technology to them, which is understandable. Anyway, let's look at this. Uh, here you see a bunch of sites on slide two. I see the World Bank. Uh, the World Bank Enterprise Survey, Business Monitor International, Economics Intelligence Center, and the CIA, etc. Now these all have a little bit different slant, but they're uh, generally looking at, at ways to help you understand what the country is all about. There's also um, the doing business in type stuff that you see from a lot of the, the accounting firms and big um, uh, consultancy firms. If you were to Google um, PricewaterhouseCoopers or McKinsey, or Deloitte into those and, and say, you know, looking at what do you know about Brazil, for example, there, you'll see quite a, an elaborate uh, response there that they, they, they allow you to, to look at. But these are very important, and I think it's really interesting for you to just take a, a gander at them, look through them, and see what you think. Um, I'm going to highlight two of them. 
One is the World Bank Doing Business one, and it's just easy, you know, www.doingbusiness.org. And that site provides uh, rankings based on, uh, so they take like a top 180, so 190 countries and rank them according to 10 different criteria on their the business environment. So one being the best and 190 being the worst. So you look at it and say ease of doing business and, and it'll have a number, taxation, uh, access to electricity, access to this, and they'll have a rank and then they'll have an overall score. So you will see that, that uh, you know, a lot of it's um, logical, intuitive. You think, well, that makes sense. But sometimes it's not so clear. Like New Zealand scores very highly on, on ease of doing business, but it's really far away and the market's really small. So you can say, yeah, it's very easy to do a business there, uh, but what kind of business and how, 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 what size of business could I do there? So you have to take both those things into account. However, if you were to do want to do a certain type of business in New Zealand, it would be very favorable because you know you could get started relatively quickly. So have a, that's a very good one. Um, they, they, um, you can really use that, uh, look around that and see what's going, but you really see the different rankings and you get a, a very clear idea really quickly on how different countries you may be interested in stack up against, say, the U.S. or other countries you, that you know are more familiar with. The other one I really like is the CIA World Factbook, and you wouldn't normally turn to the CIA uh, thinking they have, but they have amazing information. And so there uh, you go into the www.ci.gov and you look at the, and you can look look in, in the country analysis and put in the name of your country you want to look at. They have one page fact sheets, but they also are very elaborate uh, things. And, and there, what's very useful is they have uh, demographics, they have ge geography, geological issues, environmental issues, literacy issues, education, um, you know, this, um, how long people live, uh, infant mortality rates, all those sorts of things that, that are really interesting. For example, say you're, you have a business that's specifically designed to lower infant mortality. Well, then you would, you would look at a country that has a high infant mortality rate and see maybe you can help fix that. So they, they have that sort of information there. And I would say if you wanted to look at, if there are two sites of, of all the ones you, you have there that you really want to focus on, it's, it's these two, the World Bank Doing Business and the CIA World Factbook. And uh, they're good to know. And, and, and what I really encourage you to do is have a look at them, you know, fish around, look at them, see how much you, and it's quite interesting. You can find yourself get lost in the details of that, but it's really fascinating to see these different countries. And like, for example, you know, Portugal, I, I am very familiar with Portugal work with that country a long time. Uh, the last bank I worked for was Portuguese owned and I was the you know president CEO of the local bank here, but it was owned. So I got to, you know, and it's interesting to see things like Portugal, it's 10 million, only 10 million people. And the GDP of Portugal is about the same as the GDP of Miami. So you, you that kind of puts things in perspective. You think, you know, what can I, you know, on the, it's a very friendly place to work. It's a very nice place. It's very safe. So that's a nice manageable type place to work. And I would encourage a lot of you to think about where would you think about a country? Portugal is one because it's small. It's easy to see. It's it's uh, fairly, uh, it's very safe and, and fairly understandable. And the GDP is, is recognizable and you can kind of see kind of business they favor. Um, but other ones are, are more complex and huge, of course. So anyway, have a look at those. Now, the next uh, slide is one I made up on just kind of uh, how you would take this information and put it into a table. Now, when we do our final project, it's going to be quite, uh, it's going to be not so complex, but you will have to use these two sites because I really want uh, you to get familiar with thinking about, okay, I'm going to look at this country, but what would I really look at? And I've kind of listed the things there in the left-hand column on, on the sorts of things that you would be, um, you'd, you'd kind of highlight to anyone you are, to yourself or anyone you're recommend, recommending we go into this country for. And you're going to look at governance, form of government, stability, rule of law, corruption level, accountability. Corruption, corruption level is extremely important um, because it relates to a bunch of other things including crime, uh, government uh, interference in your business, and also overall uh, economic activity. The higher the corruption level, the less there's going to be a, a positive business environment because you're always going to be faced with bribery and, and crime and, and uh, danger or things like that. So corruption is a very uh, interesting index and tells a lot about a country. You know, it, just like, uh, you know, we have, we see the corruption, of course, here in Miami with the health, uh, um, the welfare and the, and the, and the, um, the, the health system, uh, particularly Medicare, Medicaid, we have 10 times the corruption of any other state uh, in, in the country. And it's, it's, it's cost uh, uh, taxpayers and Americans uh, many, many billions of dollars. Um, so you just really see that, uh, why is that? You know, what, what, what does that imply? 
obviously people don't do that kind of corruption all by themselves so what's going on and you see the other other countries it could be it's very widespread so corruption is a very very uh, important uh, indice and you'll see corruption index um, uh, listed on a lot of these sites of course stability property rights the the if you if you were to have a technology based idea and you went to China, then they would immediately steal your idea. That that's not considered a crime. There, it's not considered wrong. It's not considered uh, evil, illegal, anything. It's like they think that um, if if you have it, we can take it. That's that's a simple. Any of you ever been to Hong Kong or anywhere, uh, you can buy any brand name you want off the street for. And then it looks the same, but they, they just don't have that concept of intellectual and property rights that 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 uh, is shared in the West. So you need to know that. Then you have to go down the list: management system, uh, business culture, authority. Uh, where does the money come from? Human capital. You know, human capital is very interesting because in a lot of countries, like for example, again looking at Florida. Florida is a is a um, uh, the kind of a a state that does not protect the the the, the worker. Um, you know, your boss can come to you any time and say you're fired for no reason whatsoever. You can you can um, appeal that on certain discriminatory basis, but basically you lose because it, this is a state that has a is allows uh, the that sort of um, that sort of a treatment of its workers. If you go to other countries in Europe and, and uh, Latin America, etc., it's very difficult to fire anyone. It might be impossible. It might cost way more than just putting the person in a little desk and having them shuffle paper all day. In fact, that's what many countries do it with people they don't want to want to uh, you know they can't fire them, so they just say just don't bother us. But anyway, that's good for you to know because if you go into a place and you hire a bunch of people, you may have, may have them forever. Other countries are more. Uh, you know, uh, business uh, friendly in that regard, etc. I need to know that. The role of state, how big is there are a lot of economies that are heavily state run. You'll either be working with the state or partnering with them or something, or uh, in an opposition, which could would, could be very difficult. What the population is, the population, the growth, uh, and and all the GDP uh, indices, you know, how, what's the GDP of the country per capita income, uh, and also distribution. Is it focused in the cities? Is it, you know, like, most cities, most countries in Latin America, you know, apart from Brazil, um, have one city that has usually half the population. For example, Argentina is that way, Peru. So you have you have uh, you have you might have X amount of people, but they all live in one town. And but that's good and bad. So if you if you go there as a business, you can set up in just in Lima or just in Buenos Aires, and you re access most people. So that that's the sort of thing you'll want to look at. The ge geography, size, borders, climate, etc. The economy we had looked at. And what kind of industries are important, and what kind of natural resources they have, etc. So, I, what I'm going to uh, want you to I want you keep this slide. This is what we're going to. I'll, I'll, something like this will will develop for your your final project when you'll be looking again, like we said, uh, how how you do a, a simple strategy, what you're looking at as an idea, as an entrepreneur, and what and 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 kind of a country analysis of what you. How, how you would approach that. So anyway, I think this is uh, very helpful for you. Please have fun with this. It's not something to not do. It's really, if you have any interest in international business at all, you'll have a lot of fun looking at the CIA sites and the World Bank sites to, and seeing what uh, the different comparisons are with different countries and, and, and really does open your eyes to, to, to some things that are, are quite interesting. All right, that's all for now. I hope that uh, made sense to you and please let me know if you have any questions on that. Okay, thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.